Hi everyone, I agreed to introduce myself to kind of save on the transactional costs since we're in the world of the economic language. Um, look, before I start, I actually just want to do, say something about Tony Ma and his position and the thing that he just said about the unions not supporting the scare campaign. For a long time it was quite difficult to talk to the union movement about some of these issues, um, largely because people were afraid about jobs, people were afraid about the transformation, people were concerned about protecting um, jobs in, in the mining industry, in the coal industry in particular, but in a range of other industries. And one of the very special contributions that Tony Ma personally has made to Australian politics is to open the door for a very real and engaged conversation with the union movement, uh, between the union movement and environmentalists inside the Labor Party and outside. And that is a very great contribution. I've been looking for a chance to say that for a while, so it's, it's nice to be up here and do that. Um, I knew I would be speaking last and that nearly every other speaker would say all the things that I had hoped to say. Um, so I made a very kind of random set of notes and thought I'd just pick the things that were left over at the end. Um, Tony talked a little bit about a sophisticated industry policy. And it's all very well to say, oh, government's got to intervene and government's got to do this or that. But the truth is that it is once you have completed the foundation task of establishing the demand for low carbon products, which is what the CPRS or its equivalent in any country does, sets a regulatory cap on carbon that drives a demand for those products, what else should governments do and how should they pick the industries that they support and what does that look like? There's been a very interesting report in Victoria that goes to that question and since Tony talked about sophisticated industry policy I thought that might be something that I could usefully talk about with you all. Um, the Victorian report identifies about six factors and says where these are present, where one or more of these things are present, you might start having a case for a bit of targeted government support for that industry. And so the Victorian report, and good on the Victorians for producing it, um, says First, there needs to be a demand, either one that's stimulated by carbon prices or stimulated by the impacts of climate change that we know are unavoidable. You need to know that this idea, this product, is going to be relevant to a large potential market, not just a small one. You need a lot of people who are going to need it, the product or be interested in it, either domestically or internationally. You need to know that when you produce it in Australia, it's... Um, going to be a superior product. You're not going to be the first person to have had the idea. So the question is, will the thing that Australia produces, the very special things that, w that we start to gain an advantage in, will they be superior to other countries or other regions that are producing the same thing? Is the market close enough and familiar enough with us as, 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 as actors in that market to, to, to get our product? There's no point uh, deciding you're going to sort of set up a wind turbine factory in a place where there isn't much wind and hence isn't much demand for wind farms because the costs of transportation make it very difficult to, to move that product around in a cost effective way and you're likely to be uncompetitive. When you make your investment, is the investment in the plant and equipment or whatever it is that you need to get going, is, it, is the thing that you invest in going to be sufficiently flexible for you to deal with a change in circumstances? Because this is in a rapidly evolving space and what looks like a good bet today might not be a good bet in five years' time. And finally, is it as the carbon price increases over time, and it will increase over time as the, the, the volume of carbon that we allow to be released into the atmosphere each year uh, decreases, will your product be sustainable in 20 years time, not just five years time? And so that's the kind of, there are many sets of criteria, but those things got me thinking about, you know, what is it that, what kinds of industries in Australia credibly meet some of those criteria and where should state governments, local governments, perhaps the federal government be targeting their energy dollars, resources and time uh, to build a, a credible environmental products in Australia that can compete in the low carbon economy. Well, there's various views about that. Um, certainly the Victorian study, which again, you know, is a really impressive and complex bit of work, 
says, uh, again, comes out with about 10 ideas. They say water management technologies. We've obviously got a water problem and we've started to develop the, skill, the skills and the technologies to address it. Biotechnology, especially in relation to the agricultural sector where for 50 years we've led world research and are likely to be able to continue to do so. Specialised engineering services and of course those engineering skills and capacities come out of the mining industry which has been so important to us so far in our economic story. Education services. It's currently one of our biggest exports. There is going to be an international demand for training and education around climate change and all of the economic activities associated with addressing it. Financial and legal services. A city like Sydney is the hub of Australia's financial activity. Sorry for the Victorians who will no doubt dispute that. Um, but of course, when you establish something like a CPRS and you embed trading and the trading of carbon rights as a part of your regulatory instruments, there is going to be a demand for financial services and products that, sup that, that support those companies that are engaged in that process. Clean coal and geosequestration technologies, that is an area where Australians have been researching and of course given the significance of our coal exports to our economy currently, as many people from Gano uh, to, well, Tony Ma and others have identified, unless we can fix clean coal and, and make it work in some financially viable way, there are very serious challenges ahead for us. Uh, advanced materials, composites and lightweights, I don't know very much about that, but evidently the Victorians think that there's a real possibility there that that's an area where we could have a competitive advantage. And construction, design, uh, construction and design, energy efficiency, insulation, storm, re storm resistance, solar efficiency, all of those things that are necessary to make sustainable buildings and buildings that are, that are capable of withstanding a changing climate that will almost certainly be harsher for humans than the one we currently enjoy. Um, they're just some ideas to put into the mix. It's probably not the speech I would have given if I was going first, but uh, I thought that those were some, maybe some conversation starters for the debate that follows. Thank you.